Thank you, and it's uh, really a pleasure to be here in Israel after quite a long time. Uh, I only wished it would have been under uh, better situations. Uh, the topic for today, innovative elev elevator technology for uh, future to future-proof your buildings. And I'm going to show you two technologies, just two technologies, but I believe they, they really help you with future-proofing your building. So, what's a second? Okay. I always start with trends first. So what can we see? What is the trend between now and 2030? Between now and 2030, some 1.4 billion people will be moving into urban areas, mainly in Asia. And uh, that means that we actually have to populate a, a city of 1 million people every single week. So for us, in the construction industry, if you just look at your opportunities, you have fantastic opportunities waiting there. Yeah. One reason, by the way, I moved to Asia now. I'm, uh, I'm now resident in, in Shanghai, because there is so much happening there. Uh, but this big trend of urbanization also causes that we have to increase uh, the high-rise buildings. And what you can see here, and these are the statistics of the Council on Tall Buildings and Urban Habitat, from which an advisory board member myself and a member of the High Committee. Uh, here you can see that the number of buildings uh, over 200 meters, the light blue, is increasing you know, dramatically at the moment. It's actually exploding. And the same we can see with buildings over 300 meters. Uh, which you can see here. But not only do these buildings get higher, the demands for the buildings get bigger and bigger. We want more intelligent buildings, and they have to become more intelligent. So we see those two trends really affecting, and that is why I focus today on these two trends. As buildings get higher, we see a lot of challenges. Uh, one of the major challenges is actually the elevator made the skyscraper possible, but now, it has become the bottleneck. And the main bottleneck is actually the weight of rope. As we go up with the buildings, uh, rope weight actually explodes exponentially. If you are at the building 500 meters high and you have an elevator payload of 2,000 kilos, you'll be moving 27,000 kilos of materials around, from which 60% is ropes. So it's an incredible amount, and we can't continue that way. Uh, what we also see is the energy consumption explodes with that exponential increase in rope weight. Uh, another issue we see, it becomes more and hard, harder and harder to replace the ropes, and we have to replace them uh, more often, because the thing we start doing, we start counteracting this exponential increase in rope weight by reducing safety factors. And that effect is immediately that we have shorter rope life. But well, we have to do it, because otherwise you can't go that high. Uh, other things we see is, as buildings get higher, around 200 meters, in slender buildings above 150 meters even, you have to start looking at the building sway. We have seen the presentation just a while ago about building sway. Uh, these buildings start swaying. They take around our machine room, and the rope starts swaying. And if we hit the same frequencies, we're in absolutely deep trouble. Yeah, so we can do a lot to prevent this, but we can't totally eliminate this. We can do a lot, but not everything. You know, we, we, I can continue with the challenges. It is tremendous. There's, there are a lot. So let's have a small look at a video, what we have done actually to counteract these things. Keeping pace with the growing demand to move more people ever higher requires far more than just gradual change. There comes a point when existing technology and solutions can be taken no further. A revolutionary breakthrough is then required if the needs of the urban environments of the future are to be met. As buildings rise higher, logistical demands rise with them. A typical ultra-high-rise building sees thousands of people moving around, each one using an elevator on average six times daily. That's around 50,000 elevator rides a day. This places huge demands on elevator technology. 
The moving parts of a single elevator carrying 24 passengers can weigh up to 27,000 kilos and consume 130,000 kilowatt hours of energy a year. The components used in high-rise elevator systems operate under highly demanding conditions, making durability a huge challenge. Elevators are also subject to severe strains such as building sway, which can put them out of service on windy days. It's clear that current elevator technology has taken us as far as it can and that mere refinement is no longer enough. Connie's ongoing commitment to innovation has delivered a revolutionary solution, one that opens a world of new possibilities in high-rise building design. Connie Ultra Rope, a super light rope technology that sets a new benchmark for elevator performance. With its durable, lightweight carbon fiber core and special high friction coating, Conne Ultra Rope is the revolutionary breakthrough the industry has been waiting for. Conne Ultra Rope has been rigorously tested under the most extreme conditions and has been approved by independent third party experts. This revolutionary new technology brings a whole host of valuable benefits. Not only does Kone Ultra Rope last twice as long as conventional steel rope, it's also less sensitive to building sway, adding up to a significant reduction in elevator downtime. With an elevator travel height of 500 meters, this lightweight rope cuts the elevator's moving mass by 60% and reduces energy consumption by 15%. When elevator travel heights increase in the future, even larger reductions can be achieved. Moving masses can be reduced by 90% and energy consumption by 45% for an elevator with a travel height of 800 meters. Kone Ultra Rope will take elevators higher than they've ever been before. In the future, it can enable travel heights of up to 1,000 meters twice as high as what's possible with today's technology. This groundbreaking innovation will support the design of more sustainable, higher performance buildings that are better equipped to meet the demands of the urban environments of tomorrow. Wow, and this is it. This is Kone Ultra Rope. Doesn't look very much, but it will definitely change the way we will design high-rise buildings. It will change the way we actually design uh, elevators even in the future, it's going to change how they will look in the future. So one of the thing, things we have seen here, we don't have this exponential growth in weight because it is so light. It's one fifth of the weight of steel ropes with similar strength. And if you go 500 meters high because of that exponential growth with steel ropes, which we do not have because we don't need to carry ropes with ropes here because it's so light, uh, we see that the weight is reduced to one tenth of the weight of ropes. So it's quite a dramatic reduction in rope weight. Uh, if you reduce the masses dramatically, also your energy consumption is dramatically reduced. You saw here 15%. This is, com this is really, you know, uh, very, being very careful. Uh, I will show you results of buildings, the height here in Israel, where we have very, very good results as well. The lifetime of this thing, this is practically indestructible. The reason we say twice as long is because the, the high friction coat around it might wear. And that's, that's causing the limitation in life. But the material itself, 40 years bending, we still haven't been able to destroy it. Yeah? So it's, it's really very, very strong. Uh, it's less sensible to building sway. Why? You know, it's so light. So the frequencies of this rope is just much higher. You actually have to make the building incredibly high before it finally goes into resonance with these ropes. Yeah, so again here, we don't have the issues of downtime because of this. Replacing ropes is very simple now because it is so much lighter. A 500 meter rope is only about 75 kilos now, where earlier it was, you know, easily uh, three, four, 500 kilos for one single rope, hard to handle. Now it's much easier to handle. Here, Marina Bay Sands. This is the first place we put it in a public building, in Marina Bay Sands, Tower, uh, tower 3. And we installed that in September 2013. And we removed 3,000 kilos of moving mass. 3,000 kilos of moving mass, not being taken with every start and stop. And this reduced, at this job, 
only by 15% compared to the other elevators doing exactly the same job with steel ropes. So a reduction of 15%. So that is why I told you it was quite conservative what we said earlier. And these are heights which we see here in Israel. Yeah, so you have all these benefits here, uh, not having to actually shorten ropes either because this material only stretches elastically, no permanent stretch like with steel ropes. A lot of, a lot of benefits. But let's continue with the second technology. And as I told already, buildings are becoming more and more intelligent. And before I start again, let's have a quick look at one video. If it wants to go. Yep, that's it. Digitization has dramatically transformed the way buildings function and the way people behave in them. Building operators face the dual challenges of ensuring that tenants can move around buildings as smoothly as possible while simultaneously providing improved security and access control. Conair's people flow intelligence solutions are designed to meet these challenges. Conair's access solution features a customizable access control system that's seamlessly integrated with the building's elevators. It ensures excellent standards of security and makes moving around the building as safe and as smooth as possible. Tenants can have their profiles stored in the system for convenient access. When a person enters the building, the system will automatically recognize that they're most likely heading for their home floor. Conair's destination control system significantly improves passenger convenience while boosting elevator performance. The new touchscreen destination operating panel guiding users to the most appropriate elevator means less crowded cars, shorter travel times and fewer stops. Conair puts efficient elevator travel at everyone's fingertips. With our mobile application, passengers can make personalized elevator calls from anywhere in the building. While riding the elevator, passengers can catch up on the news and read important building information on Conair's info screens. Updating the screen content is easy with our convenient user interface. Conair's monitoring system provides real-time information for the building's elevator and escalator equipment. Data is available on transportation demand, traffic performance and elevator capacity while equipment status information helps you to respond rapidly to problem situations. Conair's PeopleFlow Intelligence Solutions not only enable efficient building management, they add real value to your property. Our modular solutions are designed to be scalable, growing and adapting according to your needs. And by choosing a complete solution from one partner, you benefit from simpler planning, installation and operation. The bottom line, smoother, smarter people flow. Okay, so what we have done actually is we've integrated uh, systems like access control, destination, information and monitoring in such a way that you do not need to integrate these things separately. It's, this is one of the biggest headaches of any, any developer on every job, uh, integrating smart systems together. And, uh, you know, we have been looking especially at the part where we talk about people flow. But for example, our access systems can easily be adapted to do also the organizational part of, of access control as well by just upgrading it uh, easily with by the, either our partner or by uh, actually working together with databases. So it is very, very simple to upgrade that we have uh, a real uh, good building with, with access control. But information monitoring, we all know about that. Uh, we're still working on that. That will be even better in the very, very near future. We will see some big, big changes happening there. But I will focus here on, on actually destination and especially on the user interface of the destination system. Here we see the new touch screen. Uh, it's uh, a 30 by 30 centimeter device. Uh, the whole goal of this device is to be able to do it as easy as possible, as intuitive as possible. Uh, you see that it is black and it has white text. Why? A very, very simple reason. There is no better contrast than white on black. You can't beat it. It is the best possible. Uh, it works in 
Heavy light conditions, it works in very bad light conditions. It always works. This is the best contrast you can ever create. Uh, you see that back plate, that steel back plate there. Why that steel back plate there? It creates a shadow gap uh, between the wall and the device. And this hides the interface so that even with uneven walls, we can have it very nicely fixed to the wall. It actually floats from the wall. Here you can see that. Uh, that gap in the middle, also specially designed. Why? We have the speaker in that gap. It's directly focused at you as you use, uh, for example, if you use the handicap uh, button. But it minimizes disturbance to the side because it is a little bit embedded, so it minimizes the disturbances. Another thing we did, uh, we put all the other devices like the card reader and the handicap button on the right-hand side. Why? Because most people are right-handed and it's easy to find. That's your most logical movement is horizontal movement. You have to find something if you don't see. That's the most logical movement you make. So in this way, we can also make it much uh, more user-friendly to have those devices there. And by the way, it's tactile. It complies with code. I see companies doing non-tactile, not complying with code. Uh, the square form for its architect fits architecturally perfectly into your lobby. We have square dimensions in the lobby, so it, perf it fits very nice with the dimensions and with the, with the, with the surrounding of the lobby. 30 by 30 centimeters, so it doesn't disappear. You can find it. It is no good for usability if you cannot find the device. Uh, the interface, by the way, is extremely user-friendly and intuitive. We've made uh, the screen 30 by 30 because uh, uh, we can fit a 10-inch screen in it. And 10-inch is one of the best sizes for swipe movement. It is perfect for swipe movement. It's perfect for the sizes of letters to be seen and all that stuff. So it's really the perfect size for it. You can have it at pedestals. This is the pedestal, same design, same look, fits to the, to the outlook of the building. And if you still want to make your own pedestal, we'll give you the, the, the dimensions of the screen and you just integrate it into any pedestal you want to build yourself. Last but not least here, our mobile interface. You saw that already in the, on the video. Calling elevators by phone. It's like calling Uber. I don't know if you've ever used Uber somewhere in the US, you tell where you are, you tell where you want to go, uh, it tells you which car is coming, and, it, and you can follow as it comes. And that's exactly how this works, yeah? Exactly that way. And now it is actually in your pocket. You're not walking away from the device. You stay in contact with the elevators. It means we can do a lot more in the future. We can actually reallocate if somebody holds a door just before it arrives at your floor, yeah? John, John, come, 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 but you know, Peter, one floor lower, is in deep trouble. Yeah? And in this way, we can actually reallocate in the future. We can do a lot more functions because it's with you. It can help you to guide yourself around the building. This gives us incredible possibilities for the future. We have this installed in several buildings in London and in Asia already. It's very helpful. Second, if it wants to go. If it's used on a fixed floor, for example, receptions, like here in the reception of our, of our building, which is on the second floor, uh, you can fix that floor immediately. You see that white bar there? It's the floor where it's fixed. This becomes a wireless destination system. You just tell which floor you want to go, and it tells you which elevator to use. That's it, going to the eighth floor, and it's elevator A coming. And we can guide a person to take elevator A. So very, very user-friendly in that way as well. But it gives us possibilities for modernizations, for example. We can overnight, oops, <laughs> we can overnight modernize a building. We do the overlay and overnight we just have it running at a much more efficient rate and then we can start the modernization of the parts. Uh, we can, if you have a party, not enough DOPs on that floor, put a couple more on the floor and now we can handle the traffic on the party. It works fine. We even made turnstiles in the same design to complement the access control systems there. So again, 
the same design throughout the whole building. And I might be biased, but I still believe that this is one of the most beautiful turnstiles I've seen in my life. It is absolutely gorgeous to see. A couple more pictures of it. You know, I believe that these two technologies will change the way we will design buildings in the future. It will help us to future-proof our buildings. It is software. A lot of it is software. And we can update that easily and really make it future-proof for your building. Thank you. Thank you.